Hey, folks. Welcome to Old Ass Movie Reviews. I'm Dave. That guy down there is Scott. And today we are going to review another newer movie. Yeah. Last week was Abigail. This week is Frozen Kingdom. Maybe if I dropped it in this order. So last week may or, not have been or, Abigail, folks. Or this is going to fall next somewhere. Next week will be Abigail, and this week is, is uh, <laughs> Ghostbusters: Frozen Kingdom. Yeah, um, <laughs> it was done in 2024. I watched it on Netflix. Um, yeah, I did too. I wasn't sure about this movie because I had heard a lot of stuff that I was just like, ah, oh. And then I started thinking, I know some of the people that I've heard, heard review these movies. Mm-hmm. I don't always agree with them because they either blow something out of proportion or like, or they underplay something that just, I find just how could you underplay that? So I, I took that into consideration and I went and I watched the movie on my own. I know how I feel about the movie, but, and I don't think you, you and I are going to jive on this. I, we, I, I don't I'm know. We may or that, may not. Okay. I'm not getting that vibe from your text. Whenever you watch it, you're like, I got issues with this. I do you have issues. Son of a but, you no, mother. no, it's, oh. it's it's not that bad. It's not that bad. No, um, I'll get I'll get that out of the way. I am look. I like Ghostbusters. I right. I absolutely adore the first movie. The second one is okay. Um, Are you talking about the original crew Ghostbusters? I'm talking about the original because I consider okay. this to be Ghostbusters four. Right. Um, right. So, or was yeah? I don't know if there was yeah, a three four. anywhere or not, but or was there? No, three doesn't exist. If there was, wasn't there? See, I haven't no. seen that. No, there, that one's oh. in an, al- an alternate universe. It doesn't exist. Okay. Three was the one before this one. <laughs> okay, and that's how I that's how I visualize it in my head that we right. go from number two to afterlife to Frozen right. Kingdom. Exactly. Um, and here's I love the first one. Second one, okay. Third one, love it. Fourth one, okay. Um, right. Right. And that that hit some of my issues with this. I don't. This is going to sound weird. Let's this hit, is going to sound the really issues, hit the issues first, and then yeah, we'll, and then, and I then, talk then I'll about hit the you good with stuff. my issues, and then we'll talk about all the positive. I stuff. think that's a great thing because I have a lot of positive to say, right? Uh, but I do have some negative, and for me, the time to do all the freaking callbacks was during Afterlife. Right. We did not need to go to New York. We did not need to do this. I did not need to see um, Annie Potts. God bless her. I, I love to see her on screen, but right. I didn't need to see her back. I didn't need to see Peck. That was a useless, pointless thing. And right. all it did was cause, here's one of my biggest problems with the movie is the way they treated Abby. What's her name, Abby? No, Phoebe. 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 The way they Phoebe. treated Phoebe. Um, she's a full-blown Ghostbuster, but they're... Just be, this was just done as a device plot to get her to befriend a ghost and right. and do that. I just thought it was sloppy in a way to just bring another cameo in and another callback. And to me, the callbacks bothered me because it was like, I get it. We're Ghostbusters fans. We don't need that now. Let's have something new. <laughs> okay, that was me. Fair, that, fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. The, the callbacks didn't bother me as much as you. <laughs> um, Hex. Hex callback bothered me as much as yours. I think he should have been the guy behind all this. That would have been perfect. He, he should have been the guy. I would have bought last it, man. 25 or 30 years trying to figure out how to bring back some monster to kill the Ghostbusters. It's perfect. Because he perfect. Them that much. That's what they I would love that. It's, that's that's crazy comic opinion. book villain. Villain, yeah, that exactly. is perfect. A comic book perfect. villain just to be a villain because he's just a, a dick. Perfect. They always call him dickless. Um, yeah. Yes, it's true. That, this man has no dick. Okay. <laughs> see, I was half expecting him to be the main villain in the last movie. I was too. Like I was expecting Peck to show up and be like, "He's the guy. He's the bad yeah, guy." Oh my god, it makes sense. He's the one who came up with all this, and it's not. And then they had him come in, and I think maybe part of the reason they did it was they still wanted the pencil pusher. They still wanted the pencil neck little jerk to be a pencil neck little jerk even so many years later. But for me, I just think it would have been funnier, funnier and probably more of a character development to find out this guy has got such a 
boner against yeah anything yeah Ghostbuster. i would have bought that i would have bought that man that would have too brilliant. and i was expecting him to you to find out that he had something to do with that guy finding the ball i don't, I don't know it would make sense it would and, make sense because yeah here, here's the thing this is why peck doesn't work um hey folks we're spoiling the hell out of this movie by the way so now's your chance oh, yeah we do spoil <laughs> movies we do <laughs> so, spoil movies so anyway and this is a newer one we're still spoiling it here's the problem yeah. with peck <laughs> Peck, at by this time, the Ghostbusters are a known quantity. You cannot right. just shut them down with your bureaucratic red tape. That worked like in the Coca-Cola. first one. Yeah, you Remember can't do Coke? that. It didn't yeah. work. <laughs> the first movie, it made sense because he had the power. They didn't, but they have saved right. the freaking city. They saved multiple cities. They are saving mm-hmm. people. He will never shut him down that way. So he would have to go big. He would have to go with the being the summoning an old god and and to do yeah. that to take his revenge. That makes sense to me. This was like you're not a bad guy. I just what get away. This is pointless. You're just a you're just an annoying guy. That's not see. It, but where you had a problem with with uh, Abby having that problem, like Phoebe, she's full grown. She is the Ghostbusters. She's the the mind behind the Ghostbusters. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. But here's the problem that 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 Peck could get them on was child endangerment. Yeah, and that's but, what he was going to go for. That's what he was, was. going to hit him with. But see, again, he could have been using that, and you could have showed him actually doing all this evil summoning a bad seemed. god at the same time. I would have bought it then. I would have been like, he, okay, this this guy's just hitting them on all sorts of levels. He never felt like a threat. Period. No matter what he said, he never felt like a threat. And I thought it was pointless, but I will die on that hill. Uh, No, no, I agree. (laughs) I I agree. But but what I'm saying is with that one little bit of. Yeah, he could have done that on that. Yeah. If you accept that, if you accept him being. Oh, yeah. And you have to to make make sense. You have to make you if you want to keep watching. And I I think the reason Abby and the little ghost girl. Phoebe, Phoebe, we just we, we, we keep messing that up, Dave. Phoebe. What do I what do I call you it? Keep Abby. You Did keep I... saying Abby. You keep saying Abby because we watched Abigail. <laughs> Abigail. So you're right. Phoebe. Oh my god. <laughs> Phoebe, Phoebe, Phoebe. <laughs> you're right. Phoebe, 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 Phoebe. Got it. Her name is Coon, right? Grace. No, McKenna Grace. McKenna Grace. McKenna Grace. Wonderful McKenna Grace. actor. Another, another strong child actor. My yeah. God, this girl is the best part of this movie. She was the She's best part of the one here, before. Really. She looks like she's, she's so good, good too. Um, and you know what? She she shows Abby. Be- I'm happy. I just did it, Phoebe, because <laughs> of of this. That you know, I'm I'm so just upset over Peck even being in the damn thing. But because yeah. of that crap, she's left off on the sidelines, and she befriends a ghost. We assume right. she befriends a ghost. This ghost is being manipulated by yeah. said old god. Um, yeah. Those scenes are great because really well done. Phoebe says so much the way she you see she's a kid. You mm-hmm. feel her vulnerability, and she says so much with just her eyes. And it blows yeah. me away when somebody can grab that and just she's and she's the best part of this movie. She so. tugs on those heartstrings because you know what the kid's going through. Because every teenager's gone through yes, absolutely what character is going through at that point. Male, female, it doesn't yeah. matter. Every teenager you relate to Phoebe. Those yeah. moments where you're like, Oh, I remember that. Yeah, I oh, I can so relate to that feeling as a kid. Yeah. And when she befriends the ghost, what I thought was funny is when she's in the park and she's playing chess and the ghost hasn't appeared yet. And when she does appear, Phoebe just looks up and she finishes her move. And the girl, little girl ghost is like, aren't you, aren't you going to scream? Aren't you going to run? She's like, why? <laughs> Phoebe's like, why? Why am I going to run? She's like, yeah. well, because I'm a ghost. She goes, yeah. Your move. <laughs> I love it. I love I mean, it. They just, she starts having a conversation. And I think it's the first conversation. Uh, I want to pull this little girl's name up. Emily Allen Lind played Melody. Um, that's the female ghost. That's the other little girl ghost. Yeah. I think it's the first interaction she had with anybody since she's dead, since she died. It feels that way. It like, feels I that think way. That's this the first is... real interaction she had. And I these, think it works. Yes. These moments in the film are very touching. 
They're very well done. And I, I like the way they, they were written. Yeah. Oh, by the way, folks, I'm done with all my complaints. That was it. Mainly just all the callbacks and pick. So, yeah. but yeah, this, this bit of the movie is really, really good. It, it, right. You, you connect with it. You feel it. Both these actresses are phenomenal. It's just right. really, it's really touching. Um, it just, this, this to me is a fun movie. Yeah. But it was, I could have it missed it as the first one. No, one right it wasn't before. as, oh. yeah, it, it just, I think it's worth a watch. If you're a <laughs> Ghostbusters fan, you have to watch this. I mean, you should, it's good, but. My, my one big, where, whereas you had all a problem with all the callbacks, heck was my biggest problem with callback problem. Um, I don't think they utilized him correctly. If they I do agree. a third one, they need to utilize him correctly. He needs to be in it. And he needs to be summoning old god demons like yeah. Shithula and shit like that. Yeah. Um, my biggest problem was they brought him back to New York. You've already no established, sense. you've established that this problem is bigger than New York. It's universal. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but they were out in the country. They were yeah, they filmed the movie in Canada initially, um, the the afterlife. Yeah, but it was supposed to be out west in America's, you know, was Utah, I think is where yeah. they were supposed to be. Yeah, but or Oklahoma they, or somewhere. They've shown that you can be anywhere and be a be a ghost. And that's, that was basically. I think that's why that worked so well. It was a different setting. Yeah. And I think that that was what I liked about it. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, you're in New York. And I'm like, because that's not where the story's happening. I had no problem with them being out there. No, I, didn't I either. really had a bigger problem with them bringing back to New York. That was one of my issues. Yeah, but that's that's my I think that's my biggest my biggest pet peeve it, on this one. It, and to me, it just felt like, oh, okay, we got we check these boxes, let's get this in here, and it's gonna work. Not, hey, I need to put this in here because it's a good story. I need to mm-hmm. and don't get me wrong, folks. This movie is not littered with camp cameos or no, 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 a lot no. of callbacks. There's good callbacks. I liked seeing the little head, the colander with wires that Lewis had yeah. put on, you know. But it still um, worked. It was still yeah. working. It was um, still I hated working. The so fact that was cool. Patton Oswalt was in this movie. <laughs> I, I I hated the fact that Patton Oswalt was in this movie. Um, if there is another movie, don't put him in it, please. Don't just don't. <laughs> Just don't. I don't like the character. I don't like the guy. Um, well, I don't already think then. he's that talented. <laughs> I just don't like him. Right. Uh, hey, Celeste O'Connor enough. as Lucky. <laughs> they had Celeste O'Connor in here, and, and they don't explain how she got there. Because wasn't she in Afterlife? It was in Afterlife. She was the little girl, yeah. and he meets. They the don't director. explain, but what they do show is that Zedmore. Right has her working at his facility where they're developing stuff. Right. So I got that, but I, how did podcast get out there? Podcast was supposed to be this. You have to let a lot of the stuff go in, in storytelling. Yeah, Cause I didn't story. think of this till you brought it up. Uh, podcast <laughs> so. was there. He, he was telling his grandparents that he was at space camp. That's that's right. I remember that. So he came with, that's right. Okay. But, he did but say I'm trying that. To figure out like how, how did that Dan Aykroyd's character just think it was okay to bring podcast in? How did Ray Stans just think it was okay to take this little kid into his house? Yeah, I'm just saying. Like to me, There's it's funny. And as and as a young kid, as a teenager, I would not have questioned this at all. Not, I mean, oh, I would no. just been, that would be the place to be is with Ray Stance. Are you kidding? You're damn me? right, it, it would be. Bookshop. Yeah. Holy crap! Yes. Um. But as an adult, I'm looking at this like, Ray, you should know better. That's somebody else's kid. That's not, yeah. and they don't know where the kid is. What if something horrible. happens to him? Yeah. <laughs> but that's like, that, again, we are watching a Ghostbusters movie. It's okay. For me, <laughs> those are really small problems. The biggest one is that they were back in New York. And all yeah. those problems could have been handled very well had they had them out of New York City. Yeah, they wouldn't have had the problems. Then they could have been traveling all together to some place in another area. Like we have to go here because this is where the problem is, and that would have been interesting for them to have to go somewhere. And then when they get there, Peck is there. (laughs) So, 
<laughs> that being said, I would really watch a weekly series with McKenna Grace as Phoebe um, mm-hmm. getting a group together and traveling and hitting hot ghost hot spots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it a monster. Work. It'd be a monster of the week monster show. The week. It would be great. I think it would be good. So I'll go I'm through down. everybody's names real quick in this in the in the movie. Um, Paul Rudd was Gary. Gary Gruberson. I always have a problem pronouncing his name. Gary Gruberson, yeah. Harry Coon was uh, Haley Spangler. That's the mom. Finn Wolfgard was Trevor Spangler. Uh, McKenna Grace was Phoebe Spangler. Uh, Kumal Nanjiani. I always mess up his name. I'm sorry. Uh, Kamel Nanjiani was Nadim. That's the guy. Who starts the whole yes. ball of wax? Going. I've seen him so Crazy many places. Balling. He's a, he's somebody I've seen in some other things. He was in Obi Wan. He was probably the best part of Obi Obi Wan when he's he playing was. the Jedi and he's got everything like with remotes and magnets and stuff on it. Yeah, he's pretending to be a Jedi, but he yes. gets off the planet. He <clears throat> he's the basically same screwed people out of money, <laughs> but he's he's it's being honest character. about it. He's getting off the planet and he's safety. <laughs> but he was the best thing about Obi Wan. Um, <laughs> God, that's where I seen him. And then you have Patton Al- Oswalt as Dr. Hubert. Your Warfield. favorite. Don't get me started again. I won't. Uh, <laughs> Celeste O'Connor was lucky. I don't think they used lucky very well in this movie. They really didn't. They really didn't. But at least, hey, she got a check. At least and she so, was in there. Yeah, she got to be in it, which is good. Logan Kim grew up. He's not as cute as he was when he was just a little. Dude, kid. that was the biggest. Tall. Is is that Logan podcast? Kim. Yeah. That's podcast. I, Logan that Kim. was my biggest that kid problem. Had a growing spurt, <laughs> dude. I didn't recognize him. It's like, and that's really? what we were talking about. It's like, I was like, who the? Because Cat Cat looked at me. She goes, "Is that that little kid?" I said, "That's that little kid." She goes, "Is that the same little kid?" I it's thought it was like, kid. "Who is that? Is that supposed to be podcast?" Yeah, that's the same. Look. But I'm glad. You know what? I'm glad they didn't go for a smaller kid because McKenna Grace doesn't look like she did when they did. No. The very first movie. She's no, and that's fine. Things. That shows they time has passed, and that's look, good. They had to make her look the same way. Well, it's but been a few years, and she is dark, dark yeah, I don't know how old she again. is. It's like, I don't know how old she is, but she's, she's got blonde hair, and it's straight. It's not, I mean, I don't know if that's her natural hair, if that's what she's doing now. Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Emily it... Allen Lind played Melody, the other little ghost. I would not recognize her at all. Yeah, if she um, walked past you on the street, tell me Clark Kent wearing glasses doesn't fool you. You know, I mean, it's perfect. She's only 18 right now. So, um, yeah. James, yeah, she, Aiken, she still looks like a little, when they made her up to look like the little kid, I'm thinking she's supposed to be 15. Well, she probably was in real life at that time because that was a few years ago. So they probably well, just, just did trying it. trying to figure yeah. out how old she was supposed to be. Oh, yeah, well, that's movie. true. Because this movie, she was probably they took the pack away and said a couple of more years, you'll you'll have the pack. Back yeah, on. she was probably fifteen. Yeah, James Acaster was Lars. That was one of the smart guys at the factory. Bill Murray, of course, Peter Venkman, Dan Aykroyd, Ray Stance, Ernie Hudson. I'm really happy with what they did with Ernie Hudson's character as yeah. Winston Zeddemore. I said it in the first movie that we watched. You did. These guys, you did. We I think we talked about it. You had mentioned yeah. this. I was always like, I what never they did. thought they did enough with Winston. And when they did, when he came back initially, he's like, oh, thank God, finally. They're getting this guy to, to be something much more than he was. Annie Potts, of course, the Janie Mintz. William Atherton is Mayor Walter Peck. Uh, and everybody else is nobodies. I'm sorry. They're, not that they're nobodies. I no, did like no. the one callback. <laughs> there was one really good callback in this. Which one? And not deny it. John Rothman as the library administrator. When Dan Aykroyd pulls up on the motorcycle, he's like, no, that no, they a- know me here. I'm allowed to park wherever I want. And he's like, no. Nah. <laughs> you are not allowed, in the, you're not allowed in the library anymore. <laughs> I I did did like that. But by then I was like, oh, you know, I thought that yeah. was good. And then, of course, in the library, it's the same damn ghost. And it's like, yeah, I, we get it. I, but I how just, did that ghost get away? Did it just escape? Well, it must it have escaped in, in like the first when, movie and just went back when to the, its... when when Dickless shut down the grid. Yeah, yeah. The, the, and they, they all just went back. The quiet ones went back to where they were at. Yeah, that's probably what that happened. Makes that makes sense. And that okay, makes sense. Slimer, I really wanted them Slimer to do... hanging out at the Ghostbusters headquarters. I don't mind that. 
I don't know. I watched the cartoon. Okay, I wanted Slimer Good point. to become part of the team, like in the cartoon. If you're Good going point. to have Slimer, make him part of the team. Hel- have him be helping you find other bad spirits. Good I'm, spirits. I'm 100 percent behind that. Like, when you're getting ready to zap a, a spirit, and he's like, "No, no, no, no!" Like whatever. What? No, 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 no. You're like, "What, Slimer?" Oh, he's a good ghost. You go away. Okay, we won't zap this one. And then have Slimer go. Oh, that's a bad ghost. He sounds you Swedish. Know, that one. That's what he sounded like. Come on. Like the Swedish chef. <laughs> Come on, that's what he sounded like. Yeah, I get it. Okay, I forgot about the cartoon for a moment. It's like, okay, fine. Fair enough. Good point. And I like the cartoon. There's so much they could have pulled out of the cartoon that I would have not yeah. even known that they were pulling out of the cartoon. Because the yeah. thing was on for like six or It was on for a while, yeah. I haven't I haven't seen a lot of it, but no, I can appreciate that. Um, I don't know. I just I I just But if you're I, gonna have Slimer, just have him be part yeah. of the team. Yeah. Just, and, and honestly, I just the the move to New I don't know what it was. I just the callbacks bothered me and being in New York bothered me. So I, my biggest yeah, I gotta say my biggest problem was that they they came back to New York like that's the only place we can be. I wouldn't want to film in New York right now for Sorry. for anything if I was a a company. I'd be like, nah, eh, we're gonna go somewhere else. We're gonna well, yeah, gonna they're, go they're, in another they're... direction. <laughs> There's plenty of places to film, but anyway, yeah, yeah, this, this is a, this is a fun movie. Um, It is fun. And and, I'm sorry, go ahead. I I, I, I was just saying, this is, this is a fun movie. I enjoyed it. It's not the best. It's not the worst. It's a solid Ghostbusters movie. It belongs in there. Um, It just wasn't to me as good as afterlife. I really, I think I, afterlife just really hit me just perfect on that. Oh Um, yeah. Afterlife hit, hit, on so many different spots and the callback when when you when you see um um spangler come back at the end of afterlife and you're like oh as a ghost yeah that's wonderful that was was like a moment like i got a tear in my eye so maybe you you know know, that set it my expectations pretty damn high so I came in with a little high expectations but it is a solid film i do enjoy it and Mm -hmm. i do recommend it Kamul Nanjani was a really good addition to this I agree. Uh, series. I hope they keep his character in. I really do. I and in the next movie, if you want to have him working with with uh with Dan Aykroyd's character at his bookshop yeah. and doing research and him helping out. That's perfect. That's a perfect spot for him if you want to have somebody take over for Dan Aykroyd's character. Yeah, because in this movie, what's his name? Henry Hudson is telling Dan Aykroyd, "Hey, you need to, we need to retire. We should be retiring." And I, honest to God, honest to God, I thought Dan Aykroyd was going to get killed in this movie. I really I did. did. After that conversation, I was like, "Oh my God, they killed Dan Aykroyd." And I wonder if there was a like a if there's a cut where he gets killed, mm-hmm. and the audience seen that and was like, "No, no." No, uh, no, 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 no! You cannot kill a main, a main character, and, and I'm just wondering if that's what happened. Like, if, if in those, you know, how they put the the cuts out there to yeah. get the feel for people, it could if they be ran that, and everybody was just like, "No, no, you can't, no, you can't kill Dan Aykroyd's character. You can't kill any of them. Sorry, they've lived <laughs> through too much." Um, uh, but Ninjani, he, his character. <laughs> He doesn't give a shit about anything. And everybody's talking to him about his grandmother. You know, didn't your grandmother ever tell you, tell you any of this? When they're trying to find out his big secrets yeah. and all the secrets of his family and everything. He's like, I don't know. We, you know. we didn't really talk. Well, no, she talked. I just didn't listen. So she may have told me. <laughs> and then you open up that door and it looked at that. That's got all the copper and all the. Oh, brass my and everything God. He it. just tried to sell it for a buck. <laughs> And he unleashed a demon that his grandmother had been keeping. It's it's brilliant. I love it. it. The story, it's, the plot, the story itself it's is good. awesome because yeah. it's just this guy who's just trying to sell some old junk. He Oops. doesn't know what any of it is. Oops. Finds out he is something much bigger than he ever thought he would be. Yeah. And he gets a yeah. chance to actually be somebody. And that's yeah. what's cool yeah, about his character. That that was a good character. Um 
The one thing that I had heard, um, because because it is such a sensitive topic now, whenever somebody tries to be politically correct or or do the DEI thing or race bait or everybody's got to be a lesbian, everybody's got to be gay. You know, you can't have any any straight people in it. this. Didn't really do that. They some people were trying to say that that's what was going on with McKenna Grace's character and Emily Lynn Allen Lynn. What's character. wrong with these people that wait, wait, they have wait. to do that? I understand <laughs> the initial knee jerk reaction if you're just it is watching, a knee jerk. You're like, oh come on, and then after you watch the, the friendship, you're like, oh okay, that's not that's not what this is at, at all. But they were trying to say that this that this was supposed to this was going to be you know some big gay relationship and Hollywood is notorious for ruining characters or taking sure. something and blowing it up. Sure, I was very happy that this was at worst, and who hasn't had this a girl crush or a guy crush when you meet somebody and you're just like, this guy's fantastic. I want to go bowling with this guy all the time, or you know this girl's fantastic. I just want to you know hang out with her. And it's nothing more than that. They're just friends. They have stuff in common. They're both yeah. lonely. They well, both come from, yeah. you know, they no, both want to see their family in a different light. So I'm with you. I just, I the, the quickness to sexualize children, I find troublesome. Yes. So, yes. and for people to act like, it's like, I didn't see that at all. I saw two people who had such a strong connection based on their history and everything. And, and friendship, an instant yes, friendship. Instant. That's yeah. what I got from it. Uh, and, but and that, hey. that's all that was for me. So if any, so if anybody's heard anything other than this is just yeah. a good friendship, I don't see anything wrong with it. I, I see how people may have misconstrued it that way. Yeah. And the reason I see them misconstruing it is because Hollywood has been pushing weird crap for a very long time. And in this movie, that didn't happen. And I have to hand it to, to Gil Keenan, Jason Reitman, and Ivan Reitman for not allowing that like, yeah. to, to, to do that no, to, a kid, to a young yeah. kid. Yeah. Um, but the friendship is awesome. The friendship is beautiful between those two, especially towards the end when the little ghost has to say goodbye, but she gives them the means to take out the monster. Yeah. You're like, she Oh, does. Did, did you know, that's coming back. And then yeah. as soon as you find out who then Jimmy and Gianni's character is, you're like, Oh, it all... Oh, wait, Wait, that's, something's going to happen. <laughs> that was well done. That was well done. Like, it's a well-written movie. It's a yeah. well-written movie, good story. I just didn't like some of the beats. Yeah. No, I get it. Um, taking out like city blocks with the big laser beam. Yeah. Somebody's going to shut them down for that. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. That That's yeah. a lot. Of, that's not a small town, Iowa, or wherever the heck True that. Is. True that. And taking out just one sign or a power line. Now that you guys... You guys are driving around Man Manhattan downtown. Uh, you know what? I'm <laughs> yeah, sure the not, Avengers never that. got a got built. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I mean, I'm sure Tony Stark would have paid for paid it, but still, right, I bet mean, they never right. never got built. <laughs> yeah, when, when Batman goes into a town, billionaire Bruce Wayne takes yeah. care of everything. <laughs> Um, but no, if you if you've heard something bad, like oh my god, this, they're doing an agenda. There's no agenda in this movie. Busting ghosts, no, no, busting ghosts, and busting makes Make me feel, feel good. Feel stop good. it, yeah. stop it. Just stop. She, she just looks at him. Just stop, and he starts singing. <laughs> that going, okay. Paul that is, plays that part perfect, man. That's one little callback I like. You got to use the music. Good. You got to use the music. Absolutely. Um, so, your final thoughts, Dave. Yeah, if you like Ghostbusters, and I mean the, only the four: Ghostbusters one, Ghostbusters two, Afterlife, Afterlife and and Frozen this King. One, I I don't consider the other ones an evil universe. Yeah. Okay. No, this one's good. I like it. Uh, like I said, the one little thing, I would have just changed the city that it was in, the place yeah. that it happened, because I really enjoyed the fact that it wasn't in new york and afterlife i get why they did because they ended afterlife with winston right in there so it was always going to be that way i yeah. just after seeing it it's like that didn't work as well as i thought it would you know yeah you thought there'd be more of a and maybe they thought the same yeah <laughs> maybe in the next movie they'll be somewhere else yeah, yeah we'll see they'll listen to us and make changes 
Yeah, so. because everybody watches our podcast. And they do. Like, you know, everybody who's anybody. Really popular. I mean, I don't even recommend you guys watch, but yeah. <laughs> So anyway, folks, if you like, listen to us just go on and on about old ass movies uh, or new ones as some old asses, hit the like, hit the share, hit the subscribe and drop us a line. And we are working on uh, we're not working on it, but I, we are not swearing as much. So who knows what the next episode may bring? I have a yeah. bucket of F's right over here and I will dish them out liberally. So anyway, a bucket of F's with your name on it. <laughs> Yes. Anyway, so we will catch you next week, folks. And thanks again for tuning in to Old Ass Movie Reviews.